Hello, Moon Watchers. Welcome back to Earth Sky. This weekend's full moon is the corn moon, sometimes called the green corn moon, but many will also call it a full blood moon. And that's because there's a total eclipse of the moon happening on September 7th or 8th, depending on your time zone. And just a reminder before we get going, if you have a question about this eclipse or about lunar eclipses in general, ask it in the comments, and I'll try to get to it at the end of this short broadcast. Okay, so here's the cool thing about this eclipse. Some 7 billion people around the world, or about 85% of Earth's population, will be in the viewing zone. That's according to our friends at timeanddate.com using raw population data provided by the Center for International Earth Science Information Network at Columbia University. Now, here's the not so good news for us in North America. To see this lunar eclipse, you'll need to be somewhere in Europe, Africa, Asia, or Western Australia. If you're in North America, you won't see any part of this lunar eclipse this weekend. But don't get discouraged. There are still some wonderful things we can see and think about. For example, if you're outside the viewing zone, think of this. During our daytime on September 7th in North America, when it's nighttime on the other side of the world, the Earth, Sun, and Moon will be lining up in space. And even if the Moon is below your horizon, then you are part of that alignment. I don't know about you, but I just love to think about that. Think of the Moon, not in your sky, but underneath you, below your feet, glowing red on the other side of the world. During this eclipse, the moon will slip entirely into Earth's dark umbral shadow for 86 minutes. It'll glow a deep coppery red, many will say blood red, as Earth's atmosphere bends and filters sunlight into its own shadow. And if you do see the eclipse and have some photos to share, please share them with us. The link is below or in the post description. If you're not in the viewing zone, know that our friends at timeanddate.com will be live streaming this eclipse. That link is in the post description too. And by the way, here's what we will see and what everyone around the world will see on eclipse night. The moon will appear right next to a bright star-like object. That'll be the planet Saturn. Earth will fly more or less between Saturn and the sun on September 21st, bringing this world to what astronomers call opposition. In other words, that's when Saturn will be opposite the sun in our sky. So now and the months ahead, are a great time to see Saturn. And here's something else happening on September 21st, a deep partial solar eclipse. So we're talking about an eclipse season here. It'll start this weekend when the Earth, Sun, and Moon line up in space at full moon. When they line up like that, it's inevitable that they'll do it again soon. So it's common for a solar eclipse to follow a lunar eclipse by two weeks. And that total time period is what we in astronomy call an eclipse season. There are generally two eclipse seasons per year with at least two and possibly three eclipses in each season. We get two a year because um, the necessary geometry of the Earth, Sun, and Moon repeats in a cycle of 173.3 days, that's just a little shy of six calendar months. The September equinox happens on September 22nd, so it's likely that people will be calling the September 21st solar eclipse an equinox eclipse. 
but they really don't have anything to do with each other. It'll be the last eclipse of 2025 visible in the South Pacific, including uh, New Zealand and parts of Antarctica. So don't forget, if you are outside uh, the viewing zone for the September 7th eclipse, say in North America, uh, on that day, be sure to cast your thoughts downward like Miss Martian's going to do. Uh, cast your thoughts downward under your feet toward the red moon in eclipse. One earth, one sky, earth sky.